Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use masks to create a loading spinner. Let's get started. First, let's make our spinner. Create a square with a black alpha stroke of 20%, a transparent fill, and a large rounded corner radius so that it's a circle. Normally, you would want to design your spinner for 1x your device size, but I'm making the spinner a bit bigger here for this demo. My circle is 100 by 100 pixels with a 10 point stroke. Duplicate the circle and change the stroke color to blue with full opacity. We'll create our first clipping mask of the right side of the circle using this duplication, so let's label it accordingly. Group the blue circle into a folder and check Clip Sublayers. Now you'll see that the blue circle layer within the folder is masked by the folder container. Click on the folder and drag the left side of the container inward so that only the right half of the circle can be seen. Duplicate the folder and set the angle to 180 degrees to create the left side of the circle. Make sure to rename it. Then group everything together into a folder called Spinner. Now we're done with all the setup. Let's move on to the interaction piece. Duplicate the artboard by dragging the Tap Event Gesture Spaghetti Code arrow onto itself. On the first artboard, set the width and height of both the right and left side circle half groups to zero. Since the left mask is flipped by 180 degrees, the starting point of the mask's growth is ideal to simulate the spinner filling. It's almost there, but the timing's not quite right. Click on the Tap Transition arrow and shift the Y and Height properties of the right mask over to start as soon as the X and Width properties have completed. Do the same with the left mask and shift it over to initiate it while the right mask is finishing up. Change the curves to linear so it's smoother. Side note, using linear curves is generally frowned upon and this is probably the only example of a time when you could slash should use it. Now we've got all the basics of our spinner, but we can make it a bit more exciting by adding an intro and some different angle positions. Set the spinner on Artboard 1 to a scale of 0.5 and an opacity of 0%. Change the angle to negative 35 degrees. Then change the angle of the filled spinner in Artboard 2 to 135 degrees. Let's also extend the time of the spinner angle between this transition to add a bit of movement to the rotation. Last but not least, let's create the exit animation. Duplicate the second artboard to create a third artboard with an auto transition. To match the intro animation, set this last spinner to an angle of 35 degrees, a scale of 0.5, and an opacity of 0%. Create an auto transition from this third artboard back to the first so you can preview it more easily. Don't forget that auto transitions in the previewer pause as soon as your cursor exits the preview box, so keep your mouse there to see the entire interaction. That's it!